Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Tim. I'm currently a third year medical student. And today I just want to share with you guys a little bit about how to prevent study fatigue. And these are just some of the tips that I picked up, and especially during medical school where you just have to ramp up a lot of the studying. You're studying for like six, seven hours a day, some days even more, some weeks, you know, for like seven days at a time without any breaks. So knowing your limits and knowing how to study efficiently is one battle. But also, when you are doing the studying, these are some tips I found really help to reduce the study fatigue, make you mentally, you know, so you won't burn out by the end of your session and you can just continually grind it out every single day. Medical student and as a future doctors, um, I realized that we're gonna become lifelong learners, which means that we're gonna be studying pretty much our whole life, studying new materials, spending time studying every day. Especially for an Anki user like me, which I plan to keep using Anki for the rest of my life Which means I need to sit down and do Anki cards every single day As a lifelong learner, I think it's very important that we know how to study efficiently And also do it in a way that will help promote our well-being I hope this video will be helpful to you guys And let me know in the comments if you have any questions And please leave me a like if you found this video helpful just for the YouTube algorithm because that's going to help me tremendously. Thanks guys, let's get into it. So one of the big things that I noticed is to minimize our blue light exposure. For me, I'm literally on my computer 24-7 every time I study because I don't like using physical textbooks. All my textbooks are on my iPad and I do a lot of practice questions that's going to be on my iPad or my laptop also. So every time I study, I'm literally staring at the screen and then when I'm not studying, I would be watching Netflix or like going on my phone, which is also more screen time for me. I'm literally on the screen like at least 10 hours a day probably, even when I'm studying. So for me, this was one of the biggest tips. Uh, this is one of the biggest change that I made that really I noticed really helped reduce my the fatigue. So there's a reason why at night we have like a built-in nighttime, especially on iOS now. They have a night light for you where they dim the blue light screen just because the blue light screen just help keep your brain awake and it just I find that it just costs more strain on my eyes than need to be. So when I'm staring at the screen all day like this, I cannot have the blue light straining my eyes and stressing it out. So there's this great app called Flux. It's gonna be for Windows and I believe also for Mac. You probably don't need this anymore because for the Mac and the built-in Windows nowadays, you can just go in to the settings and turn on night light during the day. I personally still like to use Flux because you can adjust the different range, the temperature of the color, how warm you want it to be. During the day, I don't turn it totally warm. It's annoying to look at kind of. I turn on a blue light filter, but I don't make the color all the way warm as I do at night. At night, I would turn it all the way down. So personally, I like using Flux because I have more control of the range of the color, temperature of the light. For Mac OS and the iPad, for my iPad, I actually just Instead of having the nightlight turns on from 7 p.m. to 6 in the morning, I actually just set it, you can go to custom settings and make it, I turn it on at 7 a.m. in the morning when I wake up and I just have it run all the way to 11.59 p.m. at night. So that's pretty much the whole day for me. It will be weird at first because you're staring at this like yellowish orange screen the whole day, but you will get used to it. Like when I stop studying, when I finish semester, I usually turn my blue light back on and I notice that it's like wow it's really strange I didn't realize that my screen was orange the whole time so you'll get used to it don't worry it's gonna be weird at first try this out and I guarantee you if you studying your computer a lot like me and your laptop and staring the screen all day doing Anki cards this is definitely gonna help you I used to get headaches like a lot when I was doing a lot of Anki cards just because you're staring for so long you're concentrating for long periods of time so try this out and let me know my next tip is going to be something that you guys prob probably already know. A lot of people have talked about it, but definitely you got to try the Pomodoro method. So this is essentially you just break up your study into manageable chunks throughout the day instead of studying for 4 hours. Let's say um, my favorite is going to be 50 minutes on, 10 minutes off. So you take a, you study, you concentrate really hard to see your timer for 50 minutes. And then once at 50 minutes up, you have 10 minutes now to take a break, um, go on your phone. Uh, take a bathroom break, drink water, talk to your friends, whatever. And then once that, once that 10 minutes is up, you go back to the 15 minutes of concentrating. 
Um, so if you do four hours of this, let's say you set your time from eight, I'm gonna say from eight to 12, and you do the four Pomodoro method, 50, 10. So technically you're gonna lose, you know, 40 minutes of break time, but doing your concentration time, you're gonna be getting a lot of stuff done. I've noticed that. And for me, it's better to have, you know, three hours and 10 minutes of studying in. That's really productive compared to four hours. If you study four hours straight, and so you, know, you might zone off and you can kind of slack off and not start it at all. So for me, the 3 hour and 10 minutes is much more productive than if I just sit down and study for 4 hours straight. When I get tired at the end of the day, I actually break it down to 25 minutes and 5 minute breaks. I live in 10 minutes breaks. Knowing that you don't have to do 4 hours, but maybe just you know 12 sessions of 25 minutes, this would be much better than, oh shoot, I need to make time for 4 hours to study. Um, I need to clear my calendar and just just having to get past the hurdle of it's a it's a mental thing You know you like oh man, I gotta get four hours to studying in and out It's just so overwhelming, but you just like okay, let me get 50 minutes in or let me get 25 minutes in It's gonna make your life. I think for me mentally that just make me feel better overall Because I'm like hey at least I did something when I don't feel like studying I would still set a timer for 25 minutes. I actually noticed that once I start doing that I sit down for 25 minutes, I'm like, you start getting into the groove of things and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna do that 25 minutes. And after that, before you realize it, you already did like three, four sessions of 25 minutes and you got two hours of studying in. That's what really helped for me is the Pomodoro methods. So definitely try it out if you haven't. So as I was editing the video, I realized that I actually forgot to put in one part. I was like, let's just edit it and put it in the comments, but I feel like this a pretty crucial point to make. Make sure you set a goal of how much you want to study each and every day. So for me, I personally tell myself that, okay, I'm gonna study at least six hours every single day. And if you're using the Forest app or some kind of timer to keep track of how much you do, once I hit like six hours of solid work for the day, sometimes I do more, but I know that at the end of the day, if I'm tired, I can just go to bed, accomplish my goal for the day. Even if I'm behind or whatever on lectures and whatnot, you know that you set out to do something and you accomplished it instead of it just instead of doing it by like goals where oh I need to hit these lectures a day and I need to watch all these videos and I need to do all these cards and I need to do all this stuff and make a checklist um, I feel like you always more ambitious than you need to be and you end up just feeling really bad when you end the day and you don't finish it so for me that's how I prevent study fatigue to just if I hit six hours and if I can do more I keep going um, but just if I'm tired, six hours, I call it a day. Watch some, you know, Netflix, eat dinner, make food, whatever. Um, call my wife and I'll just go to bed early. So that's why I have to yes. Something else that I did was to break up your study method. Let's say I have to do a thousand Anki cards and that would usually take me about four hours to do. I wouldn't sit there and do Anki cards for four hours. Say maybe I do one Pomodoro method, uh, one Pomodoro breaks, uh, 50 minutes doing Anki cards and then once if I can do another one I would do another session on key cards. Let's say two hours now for me I personally feel that my two hours is the limit for doing Anki cards after that I just get tired and I just don't go as fast I wouldn't be getting through the cards as fast as I would have if I was sufficient and paying attention So I actually switched my task to doing something else. So now after my two hours on key cards I'm gonna do my lectures or I'm gonna go and watch some boards and beyond video. I switched to a more passive form of learning I switch between active and passive because I find it less monotonous if I switch to a different task that I have to do. Or I would prepare for my uh, you know, discussion or with my small group the next day. So with this, you also don't have to switch up between your studying. So maybe you can you know, break up your studying with meaningful breaks. So for instance, if I study four hours in the morning, I did a good four session of Pomodoro. I got two blocks of Anki in, two blocks of Boards of Beyond in. Okay, time for my lunch break. I'm actually gonna use this break to go to the gym. So this is what I mean by purposeful, meaningful breaks. You can break up your study with whatever you wanna do. Maybe you can cook um, after your morning study session or maybe at night for your night session, whatever it is, but just schedule your study breaks meaningfully. This next tip is gonna be crucial, guys for long-term health being. So this next tip is actually very crucial. You gotta know when to take a break. As medical students, we're just trying so hard every single day and it's hard to know when to take a break because you always have a bunch of stuff you gotta do 
and every single minute of every single day, you just feel like you gotta be doing something. Even when you're sick and even when you're tired. So I'm telling you this. So what I've noticed is that when a day when I'm tired or when I'm feeling, maybe towards the end of the day when I'm really tired, it's been a long day, and I have about maybe like 100, 200 Anki cards left to do, and I try to hit, I, I would try to go through the Anki cards, I would notice that I'll be getting a lot of stuff wrong that I usually I probably wouldn't It'd just be making silly mistakes. I would find myself sitting there staring at literally one sentence question or maybe like 30 seconds, maybe a minute, maybe two seconds, two minutes. And I would kind of zone out. Or maybe when I'm really tired and sleepy, I've noticed that I'll be reading on my watching Boards and Beyond video. You would zone out and you're like, oh shoot. And then you gotta rewind and you get to rewatch the last minute and a half and you just missed because you didn't realize who was saying because you fall asleep. When you're tired, just I believe it's better to just take a break, go to sleep early, leave the 200 cards for the next day if you have to, leave that lecture for the next day, because when you're fresh, you can just be more focused, and you actually waste time if you try to study when you're tired instead of getting your sleep in. So the problem is that you're gonna take longer to study, that's gonna cut into your sleep time, so when you wake up the next morning, you're actually gonna be you need to be tired the whole day tomorrow, which can affect even more of your studying time and you can't focus as long and you can't study as efficiently and that's just gonna stack on top of each other until the end of the week. So I've noticed that if you take a break, you actually save more time because you're studying efficiently every single session instead of being tired. So that's very crucial to a longevity in a lifelong learner. Another tip is gonna be you gotta find the time when you are most productive. I originally thought that I study and I learn better at night and by staying up late, but that's what actually falls. I was just more awake at night, but I was actually really tired and I noticed that when I start to wake up at 5 in the morning or something, get 2 hours in until 7 a.m. My 2 hours from 5 to 7 was actually way more productive than if I spend 9 o'clock p.m. to like 12 p.m. doing the exact same thing. It usually takes me about 30 minutes to go through 100 Anki cards. When I'm really good, I can actually maybe do 150 cards in 30 minutes. So I've noticed that in the morning, I would be you know, cranking through those Anki cards super, super fast. Two hours, I would get maybe like 400, 450 Anki cards done already. Compared to if I did it at night, if I spend 8 p.m. to 12 p.m. to so four hours, I actually would end up doing the exact same amount of cards, maybe like 400, 450, maybe 500 Anki cards. So it was super slow for me at night, and I noticed that trend. I started going to sleep earlier because I was like, what's the point of trying to study when I'm not even productive at night? So I just go to bed earlier, and I wake up early in the morning, and get my stuff in. And that actually made my study more efficient so I can get more stuff done in like, if I study for six hours a day compared to previously, where studying maybe like eight or nine hours a day. And I was getting the same amount of stuff done. So you actually wanna use your least productive time to get whatever else you need to do in your life in. So for me, my least productive time was usually after lunch, I tried to study and I just noticed I would zone out a lot and I would just get really sleepy. So I actually put my gym time after my lunch time. Because if I try to study right after lunch, I know that nothing will get done. I'll just be wasting my time. I'll just feel bad afterwards. you just be like, man, I just wasted an hour sitting there, not paying attention. Literally, I only watched like two videos and I keep falling asleep. So it just gets really annoying. I would use that time to go to the gym. Maybe for you, you can use that time to meal prep, pack your lunch for the next day, or work on like some low priority projects, maybe like a group project that you need to finish by the end of the week, or call up your parents, have a weekly Skype session with them during those time. Whatever it is you need to do that's gonna be, doesn't require a lot of brain power, use your least productive time of the day to do those things. And this is how I was able to work out every single day. Just to wrap everything up guys, you wanna make sure you minimize your blue light exposure. You wanna use the Pomodoro method just to help you stay focused every single time you sit down and study. You wanna set a daily study limit and stop studying once you hit your limit for the day. You want to break up your study session. You gotta know when to take a break from studying and use that time to relax, take a nap, and just enjoy your hobby during those times. And you gotta find your most productive time and study at those times to get the most efficiency out of this session. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave me a thumbs up. 
like the video, let me know. Put in the comments some study tips that you might have for me. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. I'm actually gonna be doing a lot of live streams pretty much every day of me studying so you guys can join me. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those live stream sessions because I will not make it public afterwards. And we can just go on and study together, guys. Make sure you stay safe, stay indoor. Please don't go to the beach. If you have friends or family that join to the beach, tell them to stop. Let's beat this coronavirus thing. Let's just stop it from spreading so we can go back to our normal lives. Please stay safe out there, guys. Until next time, this is your boy, Tim.